Getting a new dog is such an exciting thing, and people come to the breeders and rescues with such great questions about the dog, about what they're feeding, temperament, everything. But I think there's one thing that is missing, one thing people fail to do, and that is to say thank you, but no thank you. What do I mean? Well, let's talk about it next. Right. Well, welcome to this week's episode. This is the Learn, Laugh, Bark podcast. I am your host, Jake, from On Dog Training Academy. OnDogTrainingAcademy.com is an online course-driven website. And as we speak, literally, almost literally, as we speak, I am pausing production on our first course, shooting and editing videos, to actually shoot this podcast episode for you guys. So we are getting close. We are going to be making some big announcements soon. We are excited and we are ready to go. But with that being said, we're going to first talk about this week's episode. And like you saw, heard in the, in the beginning, it is okay to say thank you, no thank you when it comes to getting a new dog. Getting a new dog, in my opinion, is such a big decision. Now, people don't always think that. Some people go, well, you know, it's just a dog, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, I feel like those people who say that it's just a dog probably aren't tuning in to this podcast ever. Probably, that's fair. Or they don't even maybe know what a podcast is. Um, because that's just not the fact. That's just not that's not what it is. Dogs are not just dogs. Not anymore. We value dogs way too much. We put too much emotion into dogs. And I think that's where that's where this episode I think is going to be so important. Because we put so much of ourselves into these dogs that we need to make sure that this dog is the right fit for us. We need to make sure that that we're all going to gel. And of course things take work. Of course, you know, I have to understand the dog. The dog has to understand us. That's not what I'm saying. I mean, there's always adjustments that need to get made when you get a new dog. But there are just some red flags, some things that pop up that just make you go, I don't feel it. I'm not feeling this situation. I'm not feeling this dog. And so maybe it's okay to say thank you, but no thank you. And so that's what we're going to jump into. We're going to be talking about a couple different things with rescues and breed, rescues and breeders that uh, kind of pop off to me as, as things where I may want to reconsider this dog that I'm looking at. And I think one thing, no matter where you're going, whether it's a rescue or a breeder or whatever, it's so hard sometimes to come home empty-handed. You get so excited. You get so jacked up. You're like, I'm getting a new dog. This is going to be freaking awesome. And then you get there and... Although none of them are really speaking to you, you know, um, none of them are really drawing your attention, or maybe they are, but maybe for the wrong reasons, you don't want to go home empty handed. And I'm here to tell you guys, it's okay to go home without a dog. Remember, these things are going to live, things, I call them things, these dogs are going to live from anywhere between 10 years and God, up to 15, 16, 17, 18, whatever years. These dogs can live a long time. So if it is a wrong fit and you have these feelings right away and you can avoid heartbreak and expense and turmoil and stress for that 15 years by just saying no, it's okay. You can do that. But let's talk about it. Let's let's first jump into, let's just first jump into some rescues. So with with COVID, and I should actually, before we jump into this, just say, with COVID, this is kind of what brought this to my attention even more. It should bring it to everybody's attention. There was such a dog frenzy, dog buying frenzy. Breeders couldn't keep up, so of course then you had a bunch of breeders breeding that shouldn't be breeding because they were looking to make money because it was an opportunity. You have rescues that are pumping out dogs and and some rescues, and and I'm not saying all rescues, I think there are a lot of rescues, and I've said this before in episodes past, that do phenomenal work. I'm not saying all rescues, but there were some rescues that were like, God, I'm just glad to get this dog out of the system. And because it was so hard to come by 
for dogs. It, it, it People were just getting what they could get just to have this furry thing in their house, just to say, yeah, I got a dog, just to have that company during the pandemic, which I understand to a point, but man, the company that you want may not be what you're, what you're getting. And so you need to be super careful. So this is kind of what brought all this to light is just the, the, the pandemic and everything that came from that. Um, I, I think I kind of relate it and you'll hear me relate this back a couple different times to like the housing market. So houses right now, what is it? August 25th, 2021. So housing market right now is on fire. People are overbidding on houses, just going in, getting what they can get, overpaying for things, in my opinion, whatever. And that's kind of what people are doing now with dogs or were doing with dogs is like they were, they were grasping at it, just saying, I just need a dog. I'll just, I'll take whatever. This dog's got a lot of problems. Well, that's okay. I can probably work with this. And they're getting something that maybe they shouldn't be. When if they would just wait a little bit, they'd probably find something better. So let's just go ahead and dive right into what we were talking about. So I'm going to talk, I'm going to first talk about rescues and then non-breeders. When I say non-breeders, I mean someone who just like, hey, my neighbor's dog bred with my dog. And now we have these mixed dogs that are oopsies. And so, boop. We're going to get rid of them. We're going to sell them. You know, it's it's not fair, I suppose, not fair to say to lump rescues in with this to a degree. But at the same time, these are just things you want to be looking for when you're doing this. And really, it's all going to be relative. Like they all, even when I talk about breeders, all this just is the same for everything. Rescues, non-breeders, breeders, whatever. Uh, the first one is when you get there, like if you're going to a rescue or you're going to go look at, at a dog that someone's trying to get rid of. The dog, you, you have to get a good feel for the dog, right? If if you meet the dog and it's too much energy for you or too jumpy, too bitey, and you don't think it's something that can be trained or if you don't think it's, if it's just too much for you at that time, you know, maybe it's right to not get the dog, you know, so the dog doesn't just feel right. Trust, sometimes, I, I feel like as humans, we have really leaned away from trusting our instincts, kind of that sixth sense. And I feel like we need to lean on that some. We need to we need to to really feel it. Like if you don't feel like this dog is going to be a match, don't take it just because you're there. You know, maybe step back and say, you know what, I'm gonna think on this and get out of the situation and think on it. Don't impulse act. I mean, that should be one of the things on here too. Impulse. Don't impulse act. Like say, okay, I'm going to think about this. Give me a day, two days, whatever. And honestly, if the rescuer or a breeder pressures you and you're like, wow, they're going to be sold tomorrow. Oh, you better get on it now. Don't car salesman me. Don't car salesman me and try to pressure me into something that is a big decision in my opinion. So think about that. Keep that stuff in mind. The next one is, um, you know, the rescue itself doesn't feel right. So a lot of the good rescues, and people complain about this, but I think there's a reason for it, and I don't think it's a bad I, bad problem, is the the length of the forms and things you have to fill out. You know, there's a lot of questions. Well, the reason there's a lot of questions is because there's a lot of returns when it comes to rescues, rescue dogs. So rescues are doing their best to make sure they're fitting the people and the dogs together. So if there's a long form, to me, that's a good thing. They really want to know a lot about you so they can pair you with that dog. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Panic. And this is Sarah. And And you are are listening listening to Music Music Elixir, Elixir, a podcast between two friends discussing their favorite Asian artists and music. And so, so you know, if the rescue is doing that, that's good. But if the rescue is just like, yeah, we have this dog. If you want it, you can have it. And there's really no, like, background into you or the situation. To me, it just sounds like a dog dump. They're just like, God, get this thing out of here. And trust me, there's dogs in rescue that shouldn't be placed in any homes. But because it's a stress and an expense, some rescues will just dump it out and hope for the best. Again, this is not a diss on most rescues. I would say most rescues do it right. 
Um, but there are some, and I think people who are in rescue and are doing it right would agree with me that there are some rescues that are just dumpster fires when it comes to how they run it and everything like that. So if, if the rescue doesn't feel right, if the people aren't professional, if they're, if they're, you know, if, if you get there and it's just gross and nasty and dirty, and I don't mean like a dog pooped in their kennel dirty dogs do that stuff. I just mean like the environment's just not great. Again, if you don't feel it, don't get it. Um, another one, and this really drives me crazy, is the description of the dog that you're going to see does not fit what you're seeing. So one big one that I, I feel like hopefully is starting to become less, but I still see it a lot, is some rescues are labeling, like, they don't like the term pit bull, or they don't like the term, you know, mastiff or whatever, so they just say it's a lab mix, a lab mix. Well, that's fine. You can say it's a lab mix, but the problem is, let's say it's a lab pit bull mix. I'm sorry, but the behaviors and the temperament and the different things you could possibly get because it's a pit bull lab mix is different than what people would feel or think when they hear lab mix. When they hear lab mix, they just think, oh, it's mostly lab. Cool. So I I want rescues to be honest with the people. Hey, this could have pit bull in it. Hey, this could have boxer in it. Hey, this could have... I don't know, German Shepherd in it. So, hey, just be aware of some of these temperaments that you could be getting into, this energy you could be getting into that maybe will or will not jive with your lifestyle. I think it's it's extremely misleading. I, again, it's it's like this this isn't like this isn't like buying a house. Like don't don't come to me with all these fancy terms, you know, oh well, super friendly but just wants you and nobody else. To me that's saying, "Hey, this dog is either guarding of their people or really bad with other dogs and animals. But they put these terms to it like like that, and it's just, it drives me crazy. Just be honest. If it drives people away from getting the dog, good. Good, because that dog probably shouldn't be placed with those people. So, like I said, this isn't buying a house. Don't tell me it's like, got this old world feel, like they say some houses that need to be like, demolished and cleaned up. Oh, a little bit of work, the basement's flooded. You know, like, it, it just... You have to be honest because this isn't a house. This is a living creature and we have to live with this living creature for a long time. So I'm not a huge fan of descriptions of, of a dog or of a breed that is just completely inaccurate. And it's really good for you to do your homework. Um, you know, if your gut says, man, this doesn't look like a lab or man, I'm getting a border collie and this thing looks more like a, I don't know, a pug. Well, do some research on on what you think it looks like and come to your own conclusions. A lot of time with rescues, they're guessing just as much as we are on what the breeds are. I mean, yeah, maybe they've seen a lot of dogs, so they might be good at it. Yeah, you can run DNA tests, and I don't completely disagree with running DNA tests because it's always good to know what you're getting, actually knowing what you're getting. But, you know, if, if they're trying to lie to you or trying to cover up something or sugarcoat an issue, huge red flag. Thank you, no thank you big time. The next one then is, we'll just kind of talk about breeders. Now, again, this is all kind of lumped into uh, breeders, rescues, non-breeders, but this, these, these things are mostly breeder specific, I would say. So if I'm, if I'm going to uh, check out a breeder, maybe I'm going to go look at a litter of puppies and I get there and they're like, yeah, the mom and dad, they're so great. They're so awesome. You know, and you go, Hey, can I meet them? And they go, oh, no, no, you can't you can't meet the parents because X, Y, Z, if they have them on site. I understand that, you know, sometimes they have a stud male they breed to, and so they only have the female. If they have one or both parents on site, and they refuse to allow you to see them, why? The question is why? Like, are they going to say, oh, well, and if, if they say, well, mom's really protective of the babies, back away, get in your vehicle, and leave, because in my opinion... A well-mannered dog, even if they have puppies, they might be a little bit sticky or nasty with with other dogs coming in, but most of them or all of them shouldn't be that bad with people coming in and saying them. They should like people, you know. So if they say that stuff, thank you, no thank you. Because remember, what the parents are, there's going to be that in your puppy. So if if the parents are shy, fearful, aggressive, there's a chance they're going to pass that, whether it be genetics or or just imprinting, they're going to pass these things on to their puppies potentially, and you don't want to have to deal with that. And again, if you can see it and just 
not put yourself in that situation for the next 15 years, fantastic. So if they refuse to allow you to meet the parents, I just say no thank you. Um, It'd be great if they can show you video or some stuff of the parent that is not on site, meaning they can give you information on the male or typically it's a male because usually they stud out. Um, some A lot of breeders do. If you get to a situation, if you get to the breeder's place and it's dirty, unsanitary, the puppies are covered in filth, and I don't mean like they just like cleaned up and then the dog happened to have an accident and then puppy stepped in it. Puppies are kind of dumb like that. They step in their own poop sometimes. I mean just like there's just nowhere clean for the puppies to sleep. They're pooping where they sleep and all these different things to me. This creates and feeds a dirty dog. And a dirty dog is the one that's going to poop or pee in their kennel or poop and pee in your house and not give a rat's, you know, um, just not care. And it's because they're used to it. So if a dog is used to living in filth since they were born, then they're going to be okay living in filth in your house. And they're going to be okay with pooping in their kennels and then just writing their names on the wall. So I definitely take a hard look at that and go, "Eh, I don't, maybe this isn't right. You know, a breeder should be trying to clean up, keep things, keep things sanitary. You know, diseases, different things can be brought in from outside. So if a breeder's like, hey, do you mind washing your hands? Do you mind spraying this on yourselves before you touch the dogs? Those are all good things. To me, they're really careful. Uh, The other one then is puppies are not happy. Look, and then I guess this goes back to even rescue. If you meet the animal, if you meet the dog, and the dog does not seem happy, if it's shy, if it's cowering, if it's, you know, especially puppies. Puppies should be puppies. They should be happy. They should be happy-go-lucky dogs that either come to see you or they're exploring things. But if the dog is scared and cowering in the corner or come up to you super nervously, don't take that as, oh, they're being sweet or, oh, look how calm they are. That's not calm. Fear is not calm. Fear is fear. The dog is just not able to express itself because it's afraid. And that will give you issues down the road. You should have a puppy that is just excited to see you, comes up and greets you. Or, I mean, if you get a dog that's a little more standoffish, fine, but is exploring the environment, checking things out, seems happy, isn't a complete freak show. You know, and and like I said, seeing something at that age, it could be environment, it could be nature, it could be nurture, whatever. I feel like there's a lot of genetics and and things that pop up that fast like that. Like, if the dog is already scared, I mean, the dog doesn't even know half of what it's going to get into or even close to half of what it's going to get into in its life, and it's already scared, back away. I I just won't. I just won't. I don't want to get an eight-week-old project already. I mean, an eight-week-old puppy is a project. I don't want to get one that's like, not only do I have to try and socialize you, but I also have to make you not afraid because you already are nervous and scared about everything. Or you're, you know, you're fearful or you're aggressive already or whatever. I don't want to have to work on those things because there's so many other things that puppies require. The other one then is the price of the dog. Now, I don't mean, I mean, you can get great deals. I hate the word deals. That's stupid. Take that away. You can, you can get great dogs and not pay a lot. You can also get complete crap show dogs and not pay a lot. And you can get crap show dogs and pay a lot. This is why I say do your research. Like some people would be like, oh, well, people want dogs right now. So I'm going to breed a, I don't know, I'm going to breed a, a, a boxer and I'm going to charge you seven or six grand for it because, well, you want a dog and hmm, I have one to give you, you know, and they don't do any of the stuff they should be doing um, with the dog. So my biggest thing is like, let's say I'm going to go look at a dog and the owner sa- or the, the dog or puppy or whatever says hundred bucks to me, hundred bucks is dirt freaking cheap. Our dog cost us 15 and after that litter, his price jumped to two grand, and I would pay him two grand because our dog is awesome. We really enjoy him temperament wise. Everything's great. Whatever. You know, you should probably, for a lot of dogs, you're paying eight, nine hundred plus for a, for a well bred, health tested dog. And we'll get into that in a second. But even if you're looking for a dog, let's say it's a hundred bucks or 50 bucks, if I go to that breeder and I say, you know, I don't know if I'm interested. And the breeder starts to lowball me and starts to go, well, hey, I know I said a hundred bucks. Would you do 75, 50, 25? To me, that is not a breeder. Breeders stand by their prices and they're proud of, of what they're going to give you in a dog. So if you have a breeder who's trying to then lowball you and be like, well, you know, you could take it for, for this much money. Oh, okay. 
you don't give a crap about these dogs. You absolutely just look at, you're looking at getting rid of them and you're looking, you don't, you don't care. That's kind of how I feel about it. Um, and, and they're just looking to dump them. And on the same front of that, if you're going to look at puppies and this is where your, your senses need to, you need to trust your, your sixth sense on this. They shouldn't be letting these dogs go home any earlier than eight weeks. And so if someone has a five or six week old dog and we've seen it and there are some issues that pop up with that and I feel like it's a completely different podcast episode that I will get later. I'll make a note of it right now and we'll get into a podcast episode of that down the road. But if a breeder is willing to get rid of a dog before eight weeks, like five, six weeks, then they're looking to just dump these dogs. They don't give a crap about these dogs and I don't want to give them my money. And even if they offered it for free, I don't want to support. I just don't want to. I'm not going to take a dog at five to six because of the issues that can be coming from that. And just, it's so bad. No, I will just say no. Thank you. That's at one point where some of these things I'll say thanks, but no thanks. Sometimes I'll just straight out say, no, we're done. Uh, no, because I don't even, if they're not willing to give respect to these dogs, I'm not willing to get willing to give respect to them. A bad fit's a bad fit, but a bad breeder, that's at a different level. So anyway, so the price that kind of wheeling and dealing type of thing. Like I mentioned before, this isn't a freaking car salesman. Don't try to like wheel and deal me. Tell me what you charge. Tell me why you charge it or whatever and move on. Um, the other one then is like little to no health screenings. If you're getting a puppy, especially if you're looking for like a purebred dog or something, if you're going to a rescue, I understand rescues and health tests. That's so tricky. And I mean, it's fine, whatever. But like if you're going to like a legit breeder and they do zero health tests, or screenings of any kind to me that's a big red flag you know if you, golden retrievers are notorious for cancer well genetically tell me like what are you doing to try and not continue that on like are you breeding dogs whose lineage lineage whatever um has, is less susceptible to it like what are you doing hip dysplasia with german shepherds i mean you could do this with any dog you know show me show me uh ofas or something Show me that this dog has healthy hips. Show me that the dog's parents, grandparents, whatever, have healthy hips. Like, I want to see. Show me the the pedigree. Let's see what this dog comes from. I want to know. Especially if you're going to pay a good amount of money for a dog. I want to know where it came from, and I want to know that it's healthy. So they should be doing some health screenings with them. And, you know, if they don't do it, to me, it's just a big red flag. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but at the same time, close to it. Um, I just, the reason I, I'm doing this one is I want people to be comfortable and okay with just saying no. Saying no thank you. I don't think this is for me. You don't have to be mean to people. I mean, there's times where I talk or deal with breeders where I or rescues even that I would love to be mean with them. I just say no thank you and I don't refer people to them and I've got a list and and it's just my biggest thing is is we have to stop supporting bad rescues we ha- that we have to stop supporting bad breeders I say breeders and I feel like it's just like they're not breeders they're just puppy mills or they're whatever or trying to just push these dogs out they don't give a crap about anything but making money now the whole saying well you know a a good breeder doesn't make money. Well, that's baloney. I know plenty of good breeders and they make good money, but you know what? They're also producing good products. Their dogs are nice. They're healthy. They come with guarantees. And you know what? You have the support of a breeder who's willing to work with you, or you have the support of a rescue who, if you run into problems with this rescue dog, will gladly reach out to you and try to help you. Rescues want these dogs to be rescued. Breeders want their puppies to be rock stars and go out there. These are walking billboards for these breeders and rescues. So I think the good ones want to help you and want to be in your corner. Like when we when we work with clients and stuff, we we want to help them. We don't want to go just like, here you go, you're done. Like, no, no, no. We want to help you. Tell us your problems. Let's see If, if what we're trying to teach you isn't working. How can we make it so that it is working? Like, that's what it's all about. Like, the support behind these dogs and breeders and everything, it's just, it should be there. So, if you, again, if you're going somewhere and I know you're excited, the kids are excited, whatever, you're finally getting this dog you've been wanting your whole life, don't settle. 
don't settle. I've seen too many dogs in positions or in families they should not be in because they're settling. They're like, well, we just wanted a dog, and so we took a shot at this one. But now he's biting me, and I don't really know what to do. Well, you're 80, and you got a dog that's super young and hyper, and you can't control it, and it's now running your life. Not a good fit. And so you you need to advocate for yourself. I talk about advocating for dogs all the time. You need to advocate for yourself. If this isn't right for you, step away, back away, get out of that situation. Don't put yourself into 15 years of potential heartbreak and expense and stress, everything I mentioned before. So that is it, guys. That's all I got for this week. Hopefully this is a, a an educational one. Hopefully this makes you think. I've mentioned this before. Jump on our Facebook page, the Learn, Laugh, Bark uh, podcast Facebook page, and let me know what you guys think about this stuff. Let me know what you want me to talk about, but honestly, share this information with your friends, with your family, with people you like, people you don't like, people you don't know, although that could be kind of weird, but just share this stuff. I, we want to educate people. You know, this doesn't make me money. This just makes me feel better that I'm putting information out there, and whether you agree fully with it or maybe only agree 50% of what I'm saying, help people. Get out there, help people, educate people with dogs. Let's make this better. Let's not for this episode, let's not support crappy rescues and bad breeders. Let's put them out of business. Let's not let's make them let's make them understand that you're not going to make money on this. And it's going to take a lot of work. But I feel like we can get there with with education. So that's why I'm doing this one. So guys, thank you very much. Hopefully this was educational for you guys and If you're interested, check out ondogtrainingacademy.com. Very soon, we are going to be announcing some stuff with our course that our first course we got getting that we have going, and that's what I'm going to go do right now. I'm going to jump off here. I'm going to run over. I'm going to shoot some more videos, edit videos, and get everything ready so that we can have something awesome for you guys real soon. So thank you, and like always, we'll see you in the next episode.